to be able to get those two things right, you know, to be able to design and to make and to do the work, that's, I feel like that's where it gets really difficult. You know, that's where like your J's come in. A lot of people come up with a beautiful design. A lot of people can shape metal, but not many people can juggle those two things and make them balance right. Working with the, uh, the wireframe, it very much lends itself to the pattern making process. The way you're laying out this, this wireframe, you're using the knowledge that where we lay the wires will not only dictate some of the structure and the shape, but it'll also create some of the body lines. Another aspect of kind of chaos when you get three, four people crowded around one object trying to all use it for reference. Making the patterns and you know, cutting them out of metal and just starting to, to shape the individual pieces to you know, match the profiles that were created with the wireframe. The metal Everyone's got their own way for it, but you know, you either understand it or you don't. And I think all of us here understand it pretty well. And, and that, became, that became clear, like when we all got to work. For me, like shape metal is, is like, it's my life, you know, there's a lot to it. I mean, this is all I've ever done, so, you know, yeah, I do, I love it. I just like to let it evolve and breathe and sometimes it sometimes it goes one direction and it's not what you like and you start over and other times it, it can go a different direction and, and you've created something that maybe you didn't originally and set out to do so I kind of like that part of the process. You're constantly transferring energy from one thing to the next. For me that's that that's what shaping metal is. I also have a respect for this thing because it does bring me life, so I, I, I have to treat it a certain way. And I feel like, again, with that balance thing, it's like if you treat something with a certain amount of respect, it is gonna hopefully do the same for you. Yeah, it's, it's wild. It's one of the more uh, detailed mediums, I think, in, in craft is obviously general sense, but you really end up having to use uh, a lot of, of senses and kind of overlay them. You need touch, you need line of sight, whether that's through filing marks, identifying your highs and lows, or using the light at the most nuanced level. 
and then you have to get like straight as well as smooth. And so it's really easy for something to feel smooth and feel good, but doesn't look straight or catches the light a little weird. It's definitely a process. That's one of those things that you, you don't really, hard to teach, but easy to learn. You know, like everyone, you can't teach it, but you can learn it, sort of the concept. I think we kind of organically ended up in a bit of a, a shift working mentality. Um, so there wasn't too much crossover and people were free to kind of like work how they wanted to work and, and we could just kind of rotate in and out. You do what you got to do and that means uh, working around the clock and napping a little bit here and catching a little sleep here. I don't know if it's a lack of sleep that sometimes can push a different creative part of your brain. Um, was playing with the position of the headlight and look across the shop and there is a little compact windshield. They said, well, we can just rob the windshield off that Royal Enfield over there, just kind of jokingly to David, and, and he laughed it off, and I just said, fuck it. And I kind of like, too, that Jay flew out with some parts, you know, and we had a hard time fitting any of the parts to the bike, to have that kind of sneak in through the back door and work its out in a totally different way and fit the build so perfectly. I think that's pretty cool, pretty special aspect. It's really pretty stupid how well it fits. And Joe is just, he'll just, when he's focusing on something, he's just laser focused. You know, he doesn't, doesn't talk to anyone, he's just in his zone. Jay Donovan, you know, he just, he has that energy and he has a creative flow and he's excited to do these things. That was one of the things that was also kept me going through this thing. It was that I, I would like really enjoyed working with him. Yeah, coming down, I think I was just like, had the mentality of like extra set of hands. You know, like there's a bunch of creative people here. Uh, I think when Christian was like, hey man, I just don't have the energy to, to really put into it. Jay was really excited at having that opportunity to really like take charge, take the lead, and like dial in some of these pieces of the build. He's always trying to figure things out if he's having a problem with something or whatever. It's like, it's always just like, oh, do it, no excuses. You know, like, let's figure out how to do this. And so that drive that he has is definitely special. So we're really, really fortunate to have Christian's crew, his guys, his family. My brother, uh, Albie Franklin, fucking, honestly, from my perspective, uh, Franklin saved this whole thing. Franklin, who just literally came in here and like tackled a lot of hard parts of the build. He came in and he just fucking whatever needed done. And I just, you know, there were things that, that I had to do and I just did not have the energy to, to, to do it. And he would come in and just fucking bust it out. I mean, he was a lifesaver. He really helped this build become a reality. Unfortunately, you know, Jay and Joe weren't able to see the final build in person but they were literally working up until the last minute on the build until they went to the airport. Yeah, I don't like the fact that we're leaving it, you know, not completely finished. It is, it is 99.9% .9 there, and, and it will you know, be everything it was intended to be, I think. It's a bummer that you know, we won't all be here to see it to fruition, but it, it'll, it's all good. That's it. That's it. Ta da. <laughs> Can I use this for my OnlyFans?